Hey there, I'm Joran Beasley, and today I figured I'd show you guys how to use live templates to speed up your code development. This is really just the first video of a two-part series on how to create and deploy a plugin for JetBrains IDE. This video series is only going to be applicable to JetBrains IDE users, so if you aren't using their IDEs, this video probably won't be applicable to you. Although your IDE probably has some similar functionality. Just as an aside, I'm not paid by, nor do I receive any gifts from JetBrains. I just happen to use PyCharm a lot, and I really love it. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As I was working on my other video tutorial series on how to use Flask to serve your React app, I found myself creating a new models.py, um, and that contained an awful lot of boiler code that's common almost any time I need to start doing the new database stuff. Anytime I need to add models, I find it's a little tedious and extra verbose when you're using any of these ORMs. And I know that live templates can solve this problem for me, so let's go ahead and take a look at this models.py class that I have here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to convert it into some live template stuff. So you can see here we set some default database URI, we spin up a database instance without an app, we provide an init app function that takes an app and an optional database URI and it will fall down to our default one if it's not supplied and it will assign it to this if it's not already assigned on the app. And then it'll go ahead and apply the app to the database and initialize it with our database. And then I have some user class and I have some other class that has a foreign key back to my user class. And then down here I have some default code to create the database when it's the run as a direct run. So anyway, let's go ahead and we're going to take this part right here and we're going to move it up and we're going to make this our bootstrap template. And uh, we can access the special variable end. And this will tell uh, the template where we want our cursor to be at the end. So we're just going to go ahead and take this whole thing and we're going to cut it out of here and we're going to ignore those errors. And then the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and hit control alt S to open up our settings. Alternatively, you can also go to file settings and we're going to go ahead and create a live template group and we're going to call it flask SQL alchemy. Now we're going to go ahead and add some live templates. And one thing we want to do is we want to choose some prefix. I think exclamation point will be a good one for this. And that's going to prefix all of our commands. And we're going to say this one is, uh, let's say it's a double exclamation point because this is going to initialize everything. We're going to say bootstrap. And we're going to say initialize SQL alchemy file. Go ahead and paste in what we copied before. It's just this thing and you can see this end came purple. That's applied directly by the thing. That's where our cursor is going to end up when we use it. And then it wants to know where our applicable contexts are. You can see this no available context. Hit define. This is where you want it to be. We really only want it to be within Python files and we don't want it to happen within a class. So we're going to say other. Now we'll just go ahead and we're going to duplicate this one. So we're going to hit this little copy. And the next thing we want to do is create a user model. So we're just say exclamation point user. And we're going to say create, create user model. Then let's go ahead and get rid of all this junk. The only reason we did it is because we don't want it in a class. We just want it here. And we're going to say class well, we'll say user this is not defined we're gonna edit it in just a second and it's gonna inherit from db.model and that's all we're gonna do for a second because we're just gonna rip everything out of our other file so let's go ahead and set an expression here we're just gonna say user as our default class name so that will be what's in there when we first start it and we're gonna say apply and we're gonna come back to that in just a second 
And remember, we can use Control Alt S as a shortcut there. But we're just going to take all of our stuff and we want to make sure we end with our cursor right there. So I hit Control C. And then we're going to hit Control Alt S to go right back in. And we're still on our user place. And we go ahead and we paste in our stuff. You see, we've got an ID, an email, a password, a nickname. And we end up with our cursor right down here for the user to start typing things. And all of that looks great. So we're just going to say OK. And we're going to go in again. Let's make sure that that saved. It did. And now we want to create a little bit more of a generic user model or a generic database model. So we're going to duplicate it again. And this time we're going to say model. And we're going to say SQL Alchemy model. And this time all we're going to do is we're going to create the ID and the class name. And we're going to go ahead and edit our variables on this. We're going to not make any assumptions about what the user wants for their class name. And so now we've got this model. Hit apply. Now let's go ahead and we're just going to take this part of this and hit control C to copy it. And we're going to duplicate our selected live template again. And this time we're going to call it column. And we're going to say integer, or just int. That's fine. Create SQL Alchemy integer column. Now, the first thing we, <coughs> well, let's just use this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to just be an integer. And we want to end up with the cursor again right below. Now this time what we do is we want to be exclusively inside of classes, not outside of classes. So we're going to say that we have to be inside of classes. And then we're going to hit apply. And then we're going to copy this and we're going to do the same thing for a string and a float. Why not? So we're going to say call string. And we're just going to change it to string and we're gonna say length equals length and we're gonna go ahead and edit our variables and we're gonna default this to be 100 well we don't actually need quotes and we're gonna go ahead and change this to be a class field name and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that to Int as well. So we've done that to both of those. We could do more for float and boolean and all these other ones. We're going to skip that for the sake of time and we're just going to go right to foreign key because that gets a little bit more interesting. So we're going to say call fk for foreign key and we're going to say foreign key. And again, we this time we want to be db integer. And we want to go ahead and point at a db foreign key. And this is going to have a field name. And this is where it starts getting cool. We're using the same thing. And let's go ahead and under add underscore ID because in Flask SQL Alchemy, this is what you do. We'll open this up a little bit more so that we can see it all. So we say field name underscore ID is equal to our integer field name that is our foreign key to our remote table. And it makes some assumptions, but we're going to go ahead and copy that line. And this time we're just going to go ahead and we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to make this instead. We're going to make this a DB relationship. And again, we're going to take our field name we just want to go ahead and use that although that's not gonna quite be right when we get there but we're gonna take care of that at the time we're gonna go ahead and create a back ref here and again our back ref this time what we want to do is we're gonna say back ref and it's gonna be a lazy equals true and instead, we'll make this target class. And so now we have field name uh, used a couple of places here. 
and I'll show you what happens there so we're gonna say apply and now we're gonna go ahead and try out our, our newly formed awesomeness here and so we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna get rid of this so let's go ahead and try our bootstrap first so we're gonna say bootstrap and we see it comes up with our nice hint bootstrap flask SQL alchemy it puts our cursor right where we said end was now let's you add our generic model so we're gonna say model and here we're going to call it category and we're going to say this has a name well let's make it a call string all right let's add a call string and that adds in something not quite what i hope but let's say name and then we'll jump over here and make it 100 i don't know why it wasn't 100 let's take a look at that real fast length edit variables maybe we need to make it a string let's try that let's go ahead and give it another string ah there we go you see we got our default length and we won't actually use it and we'll try out our call foreign key this is where things get cool and we'll say this is going to point to a user and you see as we type it fills in all these places for us and then we hit enter and it's going to jump down here and we're going to say that points to user but we can probably automate that because user is going to be just like that and then this is going to be category well it's going to be categories because it's plural but when we create that part we're probably going to get rid of that bit but that's okay let's go ahead and leave that for now now let's go ahead and fix that up well let's make sure our user model works and sure enough, there's our user model. You can change the name if you want. And let's go ahead and fix our foreign key here. So let's hit con backspace, control alt s, jump into our foreign key. And now we want to set some defaults. So we're going to go in here. Our target class, this provides some built-in functions. So we're going to say capitalize. And we're just going to say field name so now it's going to default to be our capitalized fields name and then our back ref is just going to be our underscore function well it's going to be our class name but lowercase so we're going to say lowercase or we'll say lowercase and dash string this isn't quite going to work out if you have multi names but that's okay for now it'll work fine and we're going to say pi class name and that should give us the name of the class that we're in and we're sort of going to create an automatic back ref there and so we're going to hit enter and hopefully if i got everything right there when we do call fk we get that our class name is lowercase now like i said it's not pluralized but we'll take care of that when we do our part two video where we create an actual plugin we have to add some actual functions to do that but and then we want to point to our user and so we see here that we created user id it automatically created the user class it did user id it did user here everything looks great now that's about it so we created our whole models.py there really fast we've now got a really quick method to spin up new model classes and things like that and anyway i hope you check back for the next tutorial where i will show you how to package this up into a plugin to be distributed to all your friends and family